Welcome back to our video module on mechanics and materials. I'd like to revisit our beam problem. We have some beam with a width w, length l, and we're applying some force, where force A is the maximum force the sample can take before failure. However, I'd like to change it by drilling a hole in the middle of the beam. And we'll give it some new maximum force, force B. Why is force B so much lower than force A. Today we're going to talk about stress concentrations and learn how to use them to get more accurate information on failure points. Now the obvious thing about why force B is lower than force A is because the real thing that the material feels is not the force but the stress. If we're going to reduce the area through which the forces are applied, we're going to increase the stress. So in scenario B, instead of the forces being applied across the entire width all the way through to the base, we see that your area is actually being reduced. So let's try and simulate what this is like. We could rewrite this beam. We're going to keep the same length and the same total width, but we're going to pretend that now we have two pillars. You know, these are solid pillars. And now we have a new maximum force, force C. And, and let's go ahead and draw in basically what I've done here, where I've taken out the hole that I've drilled, and now I'm only looking at this cross-sectional area and this cross-sectional area. And I find that, in fact, force C, it is significantly low, lower than force A. However, I also observe that force C is still substantially higher than force B. To figure out what else is going on, let's blow this up a little. I'm going to take the same sample, and we're going to cut it not at the very end, but we're going to cut it right here, right at the midsection of that hole. And I'm going to pretend that just like in C, I'm applying some force on a plate like this at force D. So now let's think about this a different way. We have an applied force, force D. At the base, we have a reaction force that's equal and opposite. How is this force being transferred? Now along the edges, right along here, you just have these straight lines. Whatever force is happening at this plate, it's being transferred right along to the base. However, there is a force on the base right here. Well, it can't go through the hole, so what does it do? Well, it kind of moves along the contour. And so we see that all along the base of this sample, there are contour lines. And these are basically how the force is transferred from the base to this applied steel plate. We see that the concentration of force lines right here is higher than the concentration of force lines here. Because the concentration of lines on the outside pretty much goes straight. They go straight back. Nice, easy transfer. But the concentration of force lines right around the discontinuity are also filled with all these other forces that are moving through the material. More force per unit area is a bigger stress. And in fact, one of the neat ways that we can visualize this, what is the stress at these locations. Greater length of arrows means a greater stress. Higher concentration of force lines, greater stress. If we wanted to, we could label this a little bit. We could say that right here is the average stress. So this is akin to what we see over here. Some sort of average stress being dissipated through this small area. But notice that there's also a maximum stress due to the concentration of the force lines. We call these stress concentrations. And we see them everywhere where we have discontinuities. They're determined by the geometry of the material. And we can experimentally correct for this ratio between the maximum and the average stress by assigning some value k, which is simply the ratio of the maximum stress in that profile divided by the average stress in the profile. A particular interest in our k-values is the more extreme the profile change, the higher the k-factor, or the higher the stress concentration. So you can imagine this sample, where we're pulling from both sides and we have a slit in the middle. We follow the force lines and they're just going along and suddenly they move 
they're forced to go through this smaller area very quickly, we have a high K factor. On the other hand, we could have, say, some sort of similar sample with a nice, long, smooth opening, and this would allow the force lines to have more gentle changes, which means we're going to lower our stress concentration and have a higher allowable force. Examples of profiles we see all the time are going to be in beams, we'll put fillets, or in plates, we might have bolt holes, rods, we might have grooves, or in a plate at the end of its life, we might start to develop little cracks. In summary, the stress concentration is defined by K, which is the ratio of the maximum stress experience divided by the average stress across that area. It occurs anywhere where we have discontinuity or a change in geometry. And the more sudden the change in the geometry, the greater the stress concentration.